The I-124 Japanese submarine is perhaps one of the most significant shipwrecks in Northern Territory waters, a very important wartime wreck for Australia, uh, but it's deep, it's remote, it's difficult to get to, there are some risks involved. It's been difficult to gather baseline data and understand what's going on, and that's what this project has been about. I suppose obviously it's been there 80 years now and so to finally get there, does that speak to just how difficult the feat that's been pulled off by the start team? To put it into I guess the scope of things, this is the, the deepest uh, archaeological survey in Australian history to use the technology that we're using. It's not, a, it's not a, an adventure dive, this was a scientific project to record that site, collect very important baseline data so we can manage the site, protect it in conjunction with the Japanese. So what we're doing now is we've just put the confirmed coordinate into the dive tender and we're going to go over and verify that we do have the correct location and that we can see it on the sounder. The plans are incomplete. We know it was outdated. We know it was it was old. We know it wasn't a state-of-the-art submarine. What condition was it in when it came? How did it sink? Can we learn how it sunk? It's modified over its working life. What was this vessel? To the left of the screen, you've got just the, the sea floor, and then the bit sticking up. It's like a submarine. All this part coming up here. Whoa! Wow! Does that stand up enough for you, mate? It stands <laughs> off, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Is it still a enclosed grave for these 80 submariners, or is it opened up? And do we have to look at that as a, yeah, as a risk, a risk to it as a grave? We have each other's state wrecks in our waters and we're managing each other's cultural heritage. If we do right by the Japanese, then they'll do right by us. We're all raising the bar of how we look after each other's heritage. Igo 's some evidence in the multi-beam that there's big holes opening up in certain places it's not really clear what's going on around the conning tower there might be one beside the conning tower but the data is so messy in there the other thing about the point cloud is that we have no idea really what it actually looks like there but we think there's probably mine hatches back there as well so there may be even an open hatch of some kind and then we don't really have a good idea of what the torpedo hatches look like or what the condition is. Maybe it got a bit damaged when it hit the seabed. Who knows? 
the multi beat records it from the top down so where the weakness in that data is is the side stuff so mm. if we can get that as well then yeah. that's a it's a valuable addition for sure photogrammetry is a survey technique based on capturing large numbers of digital photographs these are combined by a computer to produce a highly detailed 3d model of a subject because this site is remote and deep the team had only one chance to get it right Yeah, very cool, very, very dark, very murky. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of heavy imagining there's still 80 people inside. Oh, thanks, brilliant. Compared to what we had before, that's not bad. Structure is surprisingly good. A lot of the um, upper area has kind of corroded. The wood that was covering the deck is gone, so you get little insights into what's in there. I think our profile looks really nice. It's still quite hard to tell what's going on here because we haven't really got um, the big picture. Okay. So that is kind of forward of the Lighting is maybe a, a, could be improved. So one of the video lights wasn't working. Really, I think lighting is proving to be really critical here. Uh, some some of the photogrammetry, you know, has lighting issues due to one of the lights failing. If your lights are not working or get knocked off, like that data set might not work at all. I mean, that's completely unexpected. The brand new thousand dollar lights. So that was unexpected. I don't know. Did we get anything worthwhile at all? Having processed the first photogrammetry data set from that dive, we actually only had an alignment of about 10% of the images. I'm starting to feel a little bit nervous about the photogrammetry, just just because we're one down. If we were to get photogrammetry successfully of the whole wreck, we kind of need the next two days to go fairly seamlessly, I would say. I don't think we need to be you know, ringing alarm bells or anything just yet. We did 60 minutes of attempted photogrammetry on a structure that's 80 meters long and 50 meters of water. So that's not a long time to achieve that, even in, in good visibility. We didn't know what to expect to achieve today, but we, we perhaps um, didn't achieve everything that we thought we might. And so all that means is, let's just be really strategic with the time we've got left. Yeah, let's have another good day. To, I'll set up for another good day tomorrow. Extreme tides allow only a three-day dive window. It's 
So not every shipwreck is a tragedy, but a lot of them are. So one of the things we're going to try and achieve if we do our recording well is collect some sand um, and, and bring that back from the seabed. So we're not actually disturbing the wreck, but we're bringing back something tangible for the family. Yeah, it'd be like your sands from Gallipoli with your yeah. grandfather there or Normandy, you know. Absolutely. I'm really glad to uh, bring this back to the descendants uh, living in Japan. I think they will uh, sprinkle these sands to their uh, grandfather's grave and put together with his wife. So finally they get together uh, kind of things. So uh, that's finished processing finally and uh, we're just going to have a look and see how it's come out. There you go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Wow, how many of the line? You've got actually of the 1800 photos you took, you've got 1500. So that's almost that's like beautiful. And the accuracy Ooh. is excellent. Well done. Thank you. Good work, guys. Well done. <laughs> well done. Yeah, that's a relief. Look, that's the word that's uh, coming yeah. to my mind. Well, it's just relief. Yeah, I walked through the door in my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tens of thousands of photos were ultimately taken, enabling us to create the highest resolution imagery of the I-124 submarine that exists to date. The imagery helps us understand how the submarine was built, how it was modified over its working life, and how it sank. It is a very powerful management tool, assisting us to identify any damage or degradation and monitor change over time. Thank you so much to uh, the Japanese people, to the Japanese ambassador, to the Australian Japanese Association of the Northern Territory for trusting us. This was a non-disturbance uh, research project. There was no touching of the submarine at all. But what we did do was collect some sand from the seabed the family of the 80 uh, submariners that passed away in the wrecking event. Uh, I'd hand that to you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much.